What if I told you everything you've learned? Well, hello there, beautiful shit people. In today's video, we we're all just cogs in a machine being fed whatever big shrimp wants you to buy. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard. I love a shrimp. Would you believe me? This story started out like any other. I was just relaxing, doing my thing one day on YouTube, looking at shrimp videos, when I saw something that really pissed me off. Take a look at this. Frozen bloodworms are probably the most amazing food you can use to feed your shrimp. I cannot stress it enough. If you're a new shrimp keeper, start feeding frozen bloodworms. Bloodworm are known to be uh, quite the conditioner in a uh, shrimp with uh, egg development. And what I'm going to do guys right is I'm going to show you pictures of some buried shrimp just so you get an idea if I'm telling the truth or not. You can tell I am. Oh, let me let me just go feed my shrimp some bloodworms and they'll just magically get buried. They'll magically have a bunch of babies. Isn't that great? I isn't that fantastic? No evidence whatsoever provided in the video. What are, are we just supposed to believe these these corporate shills? These big, bald liars? Bald, 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 Never trust a bald person. I just want us to spend as much money as we possibly can on a bunch of different kinds of shrimp foods. It's ridiculous. I bet they're paid under the table by like, uh, uh, who produces bloodworms? Hikari. They're Hikari corporate shills. And I'm gonna prove it. I can smell big shrimp's involvement in this. We're gonna get to the bottom of it. I spent hours searching, finding a trail of clues. <gasps> bloodworms cause insanity. Bloodworms junk food. Bloodworms, yes. Yes, so fast. Very fast, they're definitely junk food. Clue after clue after clue. Oh, I was close. Oh my God, it makes them grow hair. We're at right places where it's not supposed to be. That can't be good. But it kept slipping through my grasp. That one source I really needed to put the nail in the coffin of this case. <laughs> one more search. They made this really difficult. Big Shrimp tried to hide these papers. They, I can't find any on Neo Caridina, Caridina, but I've got something. I, I guarantee it here. With these, this damning evidence, is it gonna expose Big Shrimp? They're, they're done for. They're done for. Here we go, here we go. Take a look at this first study. Study on red claw crayfish. When they're fed a diet, including bloodworms, they found it's like increased survival. Huh? Wait a second. Okay, 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 okay. Um, next study, next study. Don't worry about that one. Here, these researchers gave groups of saltwater tiger shrimp four different diets, varying the type of enriched food in each diet. One of those being blood groups. And they found that that group grew 60% larger. What? They also noted larger reproductive organs and faster spawning. What? Who did this? What? Did they, did, was I infiltrated at night? Oh my god, was this study funded by Big Shrimp? <sighs> whatever, whatever, whatever. At least, at least it's not, it's not about our dwarf shrimp species. And these foods are rich. They, they have extra phosphorus. And that, that might be explained all of it. Let's, let's see, we got this one, we got this last, last bit. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, this one really put the nail in the coffin. Let me tell you, this study compared a diet of 50% bloodworms to a controlled diet of another polychaete worm for Pacific white leg shrimp. And guess what they found? They found nothing, absolutely no change. Wait a second, wait a second. 40% increased 
ovary size, 130% increase egg production, 60% increase hatching rate. No! 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 <laughs> I can't keep this up anymore. This is absurd. Let me just say right off the bat, Mark and Richard are fantastic people. I really appreciate everything they're doing for the shrimp keeping community, providing a ton of interesting content. So thank you guys for that. I highly recommend checking out their videos, showing some love and subscribing to them if you aren't already. There's definitely enough evidence to suggest the observation that these guys have made about feeding bloodworms is correct. They're definitely onto something here. I'd say they've been vindicated by the research and you know what? Maybe even being bald isn't such a bad thing. Yes! The one place they were a little bit off is their theory about why the effects they were seeing were happening. Both of them put forward that the protein, protein. in the blood worms was the cause, and that definitely helps. But the difference between blood worms and most of the other food on the market is the cholesterol and the other reproductive hormones like progesterone in it. So if you want larger, healthier shrimp and you want more babies, then you may want to consider bloodworms. The question is though, how do you do that? What are the right kind of bloodworms? Are there certain kinds that are better? How much should you be feeding them and how often? So let's dig into a few of those questions here. Let's start with what type of bloodworm is best for your shrimp. There are two main kinds on the market, either frozen or freeze dried. If we're focused on the key ingredients that make bloodworm special, like the lipids and cholesterol, then the studies that we've seen aren't necessarily all that conclusive. One study states freeze drying is the preferred method for meat like fish. The removal of water is an effective way to stop the enzymes from breaking down those lipids. Another study showed that at least after a month of freezing, the lipid content in salmon was not affected. That being said, all the experiments were from fresh or frozen bloodworms, and then Mark and Richard were both feeding frozen bloodworms as well. We know that frozen bloodworms work, and so we suggest going with those. Just smell them after opening to make sure that they haven't gone through multiple freezing and thawing cycles during shipping, which could make them go bad. You, you don't want to be feeding rotting bloodworms to your shrimp. One other thing to add here. There is some concern about the sterility of bloodworms and whether they may have harmful microorganisms that survive the freezing process. Hikari is the only brand we found that mentions a sterilization process, so we consider their bloodworms to be the safest. As for how much and how often to be feeding bloodworms, there's nothing super conclusive here. The studies seem to provide a diet of anywhere from 20 to 50% bloodworms, and so staying in that range is probably a good idea. This means feeding bloodworms probably around one to two times a week, depending on how much you want them to be breeding. For reference, there are about 40 bloodworms per cube. Again, you don't need bloodworms at all in your diet, but your, your shrimp probably will benefit from it, and you probably will see more baby shrimp, which I think we all want. To avoid water pollution and help the bloodworms sink a little bit more easily, I recommend following Mark's advice here to melt the frozen bloodworms beforehand, and then you can actually filter out those bloodworms so you're not adding the potentially dirty water that they may have been kept in. If you've enjoyed this scientific approach to shrimp keeping and you want to keep a healthier tank, then we've got a lot of great content for you. For example, do you think you've mastered tank stability? Are you sure? Want to learn all the fascinating ways that pH and KH can affect our shrimp tank? Then check out this video. We can guarantee you will learn something new and useful from it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.